It's interesting to, to find out to what degree a politician's rhetoric matches uh, his own performance. And sometimes you find out the hard way. Uh, sometimes politicians will buy into stuff and they uh, they go bankrupt. Or sometimes they invest with uh, Bernie Madoff <laughs> and they go bankrupt. Or they have their port- portfolio wiped out by bubbles. I was looking at, uh, I think it was Lou Rockwell's uh, column here, uh, that basically told, it tells everybody what you've been investing in over the years. It's just a... Uh, you have been a gold bug all of your life, one form or another. You have been a skeptic of uh, a fiat currency and Federal Reserve notes. So it's a, people, I think, will get a kick out of just hearing what you, <laughs> what you uh, bought. Uh, uh, Agnico Eagle Mines, uh, Nevada Gold Corporation, uh, Barrick Gold Corporation, um, Apollo and uh, Bringus Gold Corporation, <laughs> a Mine Corporation, Dundee. You've got Gold Corp, Inc. You've got Health uh, Mining, you've got El Dorado Gold Corp, I am Gold Corp, uh, Silver Corp, Metaline Mining, Mutual Securities, you've got the Newmont uh, Mining Corp, Pan American Silver. Um, I, th- I, I detect a trend here. Uh, <laughs> you've got Vista Gold Corp and uh, Weedsome Gold Mines Limited. And according to the person who evaluated, your portfolio has done, quote, very nicely for him. <laughs> well, and that's sad because that means the dollar has done very poorly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I mentioned earlier on about uh, the terrible decade we've had uh, where there's been no new jobs, one million less jobs in spite of a $30 million increase in population. But gold at the beginning of the decade, beginning of the century, was uh, went down to like 262 and now it's over $1,500. And that just means that things are out of control and the only thing left is printing money. But I started in this way. I don't think of this as much as investing. I know it is called investing. But I th- I look at what I've done there is buying insurance. And I started that in 1971, you know, when the last link to gold was severed. At that time, gold was uh, $35 to an ounce. Uh, $1 was one thirty-fifth of an ounce of gold. And uh, I figured it won't stay that way. It's going to go up. And There's it doesn't the, go up yeah. in a straight line, but it has gone up steadily. So, I have said what the system we have now is going to ruin the dollar, and uh, hard assets are the way to go if you want mm-hmm. to be, you know, if you want to insure against it. But the one thing that sometimes people say, well, really, should you be involved in doing this because maybe there's a conflict, you know, of interest with gold yeah, and money? Yeah, you've been voting against your own interest all yeah, this Yeah, now, you, under- <laughs> you understand it, but others haven't. They want to accuse me. I said, do you know that if I'm successful, it's going to hurt all my investments? Yeah. If you actually listen to me, I'm screwed. Yeah, they're going to they're going to so-called freeze the price of gold. You know? so, but you understood that. Um, I noticed the uh, uh, the the Chinese are going to bail out the euro. Why are they going to do that? Because China is in the driver's seat. They have the wealth. They have three trillion dollars in the bank. Um, and uh, why do they care what happens to the euros if they're invested so much in the dollar? Well, I think they want the they want the euro to survive. Uh, uh, I think they want to maintain uh, as much order. Nobody wants to see the crash of the dollar or the euro. The euro is under stress, you know, because of Greece and whether that'll spread. So I think they want to maintain order, even though they may know what many of us suspect that eventually the dollar will go and it won't be the reserve currency of the world. The euro will probably not be sustained. Yeah. But they're talking about they're talking about uh, you know using gold. I mean, when the IMF uh, sells gold. Places like India and Indonesia and China, they they buy up the gold, and uh, they also, uh, to me, the saddest thing that's going on is is that you can make a case today for the fact that China is more capitalistic than the United States. That's where our businesses are going. It's easier to start a business. They sell, they save, and they they invest. They're investing now in mineral resources in Afghanistan. And what are we doing in Afghanistan? We're bankrupting our country. We're killing people. Well, our people are getting killed, and there's China buying up the assets. And at the same time, everything we're doing over there, we're driving all the countries closer to Iran and into into China's hand. So China, China is, uh, you know, I think pretty shrewd on what they're doing here. But um, it, it to me is a sad story for what we've done to ourselves. You've described in your book, uh, Liberty Defined. You defined 
uh, you you label the current system we have, the fiat currency, as a quote moral hazard, and you said that uh, Volcker agreed with that assessment. Well, Volcker was one that I was able to talk to a lot more, and we had more visits. I had probably more respect for him than uh, the other central bankers. He actually, at one time, when they were getting off the gold standard, argued that there was some danger in this. He's not an Austrian economist, but uh, he's, he's a decent person. And he saw the moral hazard in going off the yeah. gold standard and allowing uh, you know governments to spend money and put the pressure on the Fed to just monetize the debt. People might be thinking at this point, uh, Congressman Ron Paul, why are you spending so much time talking about this technical stuff, gold, uh, euros, uh, Federal Reserve? Why, why are you spending that much time thinking about it? And I would assert because everything that we buy, our futures, uh, the cost of food, the price of gas at the pump, all related to, to all of this. You, mm-hmm. Unless you understand what they've done to the currency, you won't understand what uh, you won't understand anything actually uh, about the direction of our government. In in the seventies, I came to the realization that periodically in our history and in the history of all countries, monetary issues has become the big issue. And I think we are fast approaching that. When you think of what's happened in the last two or three years, who would have ever dreamed that uh, Bernanke would be holding press conference trying to calm the markets? But every time he has a press conference, the, the, dollar, the dollar goes down. Uh, so uh, this this is, a, this is an event I think is a huge event. And you're absolutely right. Uh, the money issue, the value of the dollar, is one half of every transaction that we could commit to your salaries, your prices that you pay, and everything that we do, how you save your money, depends on the, on the currency value. And the, the, this whole monetary system is the reason government is big. If they couldn't monetize debt, we'd have to borrow this money, and interest rates would go up, and we'd have to quit. That's all you would have to do, is follow the Constitution on money, and we would not have this catastrophe that we're, we're facing today. And it encourages big government, and I don't like big government. I don't like big government. To, for us to police the world and to run a welfare state. And it all leads to this huge bubble, uh, this dependency that won't last. And they're doing, they're desperately trying to hold this thing together by doing exactly what they did mm-hmm. to create the crisis. Uh, last week, I think it was, uh, one of your colleagues in the House, Dana Rohrabacher, went over to Iraq with a delegation, and he met with the uh, uh, the president or whatever the uh, the top guy over there. I can't remember the guy's name at the moment. Uh, and invited the uh, president of Iraq to uh, consider re- uh, paying back Americans for the cost of uh, the United States liberating them from Saddam. Uh, their response to the idea of being paid back, the Americans being paid back with some of the Iraq oil money, was they got kicked out of the country. Uh, yeah. and, and the Bush administration, you had several members of the Bush administration promising this this would be the first war, uh, that the rebuilding process will be self-funded. The American taxpayers won't have to do it. Turns out that that was a hideous, hideous lie. And that's why you should always be skeptical of uh, what the politicians are promising. Be careful on what the, what they say, uh, because this is preposterous. Uh, the fact that we went over there, we we started a preemptive war for reasons that did not exist, like weapons of mass destruction. Probably a million Iraqis have died since we invaded that country. Uh, what do we lose? We've lost, what, three, 4,000, 30, 40,000 severe injuries, and, and, and they've had nothing but chaos over there. Then to go over there and give them a bill? I mean, <laughs> that, that just seems so, so bizarre that... Uh, well, if, if you have a just war theory, and that's kind of how I think right. about it, uh, if you if it's necessary to go to war, it is uh, not only moral but obligatory to ask for reparations. But the fact that we're n- uh, we have to ask, and there and we are doing so from not the moral high ground, doesn't that sort of give away that we didn't have the moral basis to be there to begin we, with? We don't because it wasn't a defensive war. We weren't defending ourselves. We were there to take over that country, probably for the oil. That's my estimation. Well, if that's why we're over there, let's start getting some. (laughs) We haven't got a single gallon yet. And of the billions that have been extracted, 95% of the oil revenue, they don't have no idea where it went. They don't know where it went. But what about that $16 billion in cash that we sent over there?
over there, you know, at the time, you know, after Saddam was run out of the country, $16 billion in literal cash, and they're having trouble figuring out where it is. I mean, this when this history is written, people are going to say, you know, 10, they should think of it right now. What were these people thinking about? You know, that they do, ran a foreign policy like that, and then if they came up short at home for their entitlement, says, oh, just print the money. You know, it'll work. Print as, well, as much as you need. I mean, it is, it is so bizarre that it's amazing that grown up people actually think, think along these have, lines. Have the American people. Uh, maybe it's time to give up on the political class entirely here, uh, but have the American people lost their ability to assess the principles and the behavior of their own leadership, uh, lost the ability or they have lost the political will to do so, and, and they've given up on the, pre- the prerequisites of being uh, living in a, a Republican free form of government. Well, this is up for grabs, and this is what I'm very much involved in, and this is where I do get some sense of optimism, because I think there's a growing number. We certainly aren't the majority, or we would have changed Washington. But boy, there's a growing number of people who join the Tea Party movement for the right reason. There's a growing number of people who say we want change and holding the feet to the fire. But I think your side or your point that you're making, there's still a lot of people, you know, they're still very dependent. And can they break away from the dependency? Do they still, uh, will they be open to the idea that an entitlement is not a right? Uh, But as the country gets poorer and poorer, this, this will be resolved. But where I get optimistic is talking to the younger generation because they know what they're getting handed. They can't find their jobs, and they're getting a lot of bills, and uh, they want something different. They'd like to opt out of the system. You know, they've talked about opting out of uh, Obamacare. Well, I offer uh, in my talks the chance to opt out of the system. Just, just go on your own. Don't expect anything from government. Maybe you even have to pay a token amount of money to opt out of the system. But you don't want anything from government. And that's what freedom is all about, that you assume responsibility for yourself. So, I th- there's a growing number that way. But, boy, I'll tell you what, we have a long way to go because I don't think we're going to all of a sudden see the transition occurring in the next month or two or year or two. But uh, there's a crisis coming much bigger than we faced. There will be an opportunity. We're either going to go by way of having more dictatorial powers and internationalism, or we're going to opt out for what uh, America was built on, and that is our Constitution and limited government. 